Documenting, Testing and Deploying. How to test a microservice in Python. In this video, we're going to investigate what could be tested in a microservice. We're going to create some Python unit tests that check our API endpoints, and then we're going to run these tests and discuss how they could be improved in the future. Testing a microservice is very similar to testing another application. However, with microservices, things are far more decoupled than perhaps a monolithic application. And therefore, you also need to test the integration between the microservices. You also need to test the configuration, any internal routines and processes, and of course, the API endpoints that the microservices expose. Let's take a look at how the product service is tested. If you open up test underscore service dot py, within the product service GitHub repository, uh, you'll see that, that we have a product service test case. Now this test case class holds all the unit tests for the product service. We've got test underscore products. And if we scroll down here, we can see that we have a test underscore product. These are both unit tests. Before I discuss what those unit tests are actually checking against, let's just go and talk about the actual test case itself. Let's scroll right to the top. We can see that we're importing unit test, setup, and JSON. And what we're doing in the setup method is that we're initializing the application. So what we're doing here is we're creating the application and we can pass different configuration rules if we want to, to the creation method for this application. We're then generating a client and that client is going to be used to issue the API requests against our product service. So here we've got self.client is equal to test underscore client of the application that we've just initialized. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the actual unit tests themselves. The first one is test underscore products. And what we're doing here is we are requesting API products using the client that we've created. So that is going to issue a request and what we've done is we've assigned res to the response of that request. Now we have the response, we can actually run some assertions against that to ensure that the response is what we intended. So what we're doing here is we're asserting that it equals a 200 response. So we're checking the status code in this case. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we have a whole JSON structure here. This is checking the JSON response of the request that was made. So let's scroll down. We can see that we have data is equal to json.loads res get data as text. This is going to compare this structure, this one here, against the response. In the next API request, we're checking a single product. So that is test underscore product. Again, what we're doing is we're issuing a request using the client, but this time we're doing it against API product, product hyphen one. We are also checking the status code, which is 200 okay. And we are also checking the response. So that is the JSON response that we intend to get from that request. And again, we're doing a JSON.loads using that response data that was returned. And we're checking whether or not that is equal to the data that we expect. So let's go ahead and run those product unit tests. So what I need to do is go into the terminal here and just check that we are in the application directory. If I did an LS, we should be able to see that we have the test underscore service dot py file. Now this is just a Python file. So to run this type Python and then test underscore service dot py. If we press enter here, it's going to run that test case. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of output. Now the output that we are most concerned about right now is this part right at the bottom. So two tests ran and ran okay. The output at the top here, this is all deprecated warnings. This is another reason why unit tests are very, very good because it actually runs the code and logs out any kind of deprecated warnings that you've got. So I suggest going in and actually fixing a lot of these deprecated warnings. They're not actually going to break the system, but they will 
later on once the system has been updated to perhaps a different version of the dependency or a different version of Python. So here we can see that we have a whole bunch of deprecated warnings that we really should be going through and fixing. But what happens when the unit test fails? Let's go back into the code and change the way the unit tests are run so we can actually force a unit test to fail. So let's say, for example, that we want to make this test product fail. Let's change the product one to be product 10. Let's save that and go back into the code and run that unit test again. So I'm just going to press up on the keyboard to get the last command that I run, which in this case was Python test underscore PY. Let's press enter and we should see that we have failed. And it's failed because we can't run that unit test as it's returning a 404 instead of a 200 OK, because that product doesn't exist. We don't have product 10 on the product slug. So let's go back into the code. And this time, let's go ahead and change the output of the, uh, the JSON response. So instead of having ID 1, let's change that to be ID 100 or 1100. Let's hit save, go back into the terminal and run that again. So in this case, it's failed, but it hasn't failed because it's returning a 404. It's failed because it's found the actual API endpoint and it's actually got a response, which is a 200 OK. So that assertion has succeeded, but it's failed because the ID is wrong. The ID returned should be one. And in this case, we've got 1100. So it's actually really good because it pinpoints down what is actually wrong with that unit test. Now to improve these unit tests, we should also be checking against false positives. So for example, we want to ensure that any error responses come back correctly. We want to make sure that we just simply can't do silly things within our application. So when you're writing your unit tests, make sure that you're not just testing against things that should work, also test things that should fail.